This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get techie. It's uh, time for the awesome cast. Mike Sorg here at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios, the frigid Mayhem Studios amidst this this frigid Tuesday evening in Pittsburgh, PA. And I got the crew here. Thankfully, it's a it's a Studio C and such uh, kind of week. Uh, we have, of course, John Chichilla in Studio C, all warm and cozy and saying, hey Siri, please turn on the fire for me. That's that's a good one. I'm a, if I had to, my my fireplace is, uses an infrared remote, so I'm going to have to figure <laughs> oh, out a way to do that. But of course, it if does. You think it's, if you if you think it's cold now, give it two days because <laughs> we're we're going to see highs about thirteen. Hmm. There you go. Also with us from Studio D it is Katie. <laughs> Dude is social media extraordinaire with Scarehouse and other great projects. How you doing? And good. I brought my friend Grimlock. He's my new ornament. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Wait, is, it, is it transform? Is it for real? No, um, there was a lot of disappointment in the household when we realized it just hangs on the tree. It's just a Grimlock. <laughs> so I have to find my Grimlock. <laughs> There's it's, no lights or no sound? No, it's it's just he's just a Grimlock. <laughs> sometimes sometimes a Grimlock's just a Grimlock, you know. So Yeah. All right, guys. Grimlock check it. on a Grimlock. We're going to get into all the awesome things and tech news and, and gadgets that we've been uh, checking out for the week. But first, please go check us out. We're at awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to this and the awesome chat interview, a little bit of a hiatus. I think I've got one more to squeeze out there before the end of the year. Uh, we'll be uh, kind of off for the holidays. Uh, oh, and also a programming note next week uh, around 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live.awesomecast.net. You're going to want to tune in. It is our end of the year holiday special. We do predictions, awesome things of the year, uh, whatever we do i don't know. i usually listen to last year and figure out what we do for the episode again and what our predictions were and we'll see how right we were uh so uh i think i think it'll be interesting to see that i think i think chilla referenced uh, his prediction a couple weeks ago on the show previously so uh it'll, it'll be fun to uh, uh do that and uh get a big crew in here and talk about the future of awesome also check us out uh Twitter, at AwesomeCast over there. AwesomeCast on the Facebook. We have a Facebook group where you guys can talk with us. AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com if you want to send anything over. Actually, we had a story from uh, one of our Patreon supporters. Actually, both our Patreon supporters uh, uh, submitted some stuff for the show between Twitter and email. So so thank you so much. Uh, you guys are part of the show. You guys are contributing to the show. Really, really appreciate that. Subscribe and rate us on YouTube, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, video versions on uh, YouTube, as well as the Facebook page, uh, as well as the stream lately is coming from our Facebook Live connections, so you can get the notification whenever that pops up and join us in the chat, just like uh, Wheels does, as he usually does every week. Uh, guys like Crazy Krause and, uh, and so many more uh, that do drop in, uh, and wherever we end up from week to week, you can get a link in some fashion over at live.awesome cast.net so just bookmark that and also we're over streaming at rivers edge pgh.com thursday mornings at 8 a.m after funny money support that great uh spot over there big thanks to our patreon supporters matt weller of course uh and mike fedor of mike fedor show over there thank you so much guys for contributing to the show patreon.com slash awesome cast become our boss and stay tuned on there there's going to be some uh, uh big changes i think before uh, the beginning of the year and my awesome thing is apparently butt peaches worldwide. Thank you, Katie. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Teamwork. Well, let's get into that. Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? Let's talk about butt peaches. They're back. Uh, the new iOS update 10.2, uh, new emojis, um, including some more diverse characters, different professions, uh, some new food, sports animals, as well as face palm, shrug, selfie, clown faces, whiskey, call me. So instead of having to communicate with actual words, we can still use emojis. It's funny because I'm looking at some of these emojis and they remind me a lot of um, 
the Bitmojis that we've all been using. So I don't know if they're taking a nod from them or who is influencing well, there, there, who. There's a consortium, though, that don't they meet? Like every so often, and they determine the what what the new emoji description is going to be, Ooh. and then it's up to each company to determine how they're going to represent that description. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's the same. It's like it's the same people that do like the ASCII codes and all the mm-hmm. all the stuff for typical text. Um. Yes, so they, they meet, I don't know how off, what the frequency of their their meeting is, but they, they determine what new emojis are going to be let in, which ones are going to be tabled, et cetera, et cetera. So. Oh, wow. I'm looking it up now. <laughs> EmojiCon. No, that's not it. Is it EmojiCon? Yeah, they, totally so, different. yeah, they look, they do look pretty interesting. So, and, and I know before they were trying to do like anything that was like a person they were trying to do kind of multi-ethnic, right? Yes. So, so you have a lot more choices. Um, it's not so much. Everybody looks the same. And like I said, I'm excited about like the, the shoulder shrug, like Rrr! and the table flip I'm sure is on there. <laughs> Interesting things like, like, like two wrestlers going at it. Uh, a lot of sports going on in here. Yeah. Um, saying you some, there you go. Uh, <laughs> I see Harambe. Uh, is there a Harambe in there? Yeah, it looks like there's a Harambe. Oh wow, that's interesting. Uh, so, but yeah, we got our butt peach. Got our butt peach back as as uh, uh, Mike Pound was Uncle Crappy was uh, talking about a few weeks ago on this show. Uh, so, uh, all right. So this there's a little more. So all I all I knew about what this um, update was the TVOS stuff. Um, I'm sorry, the TV app uh, kind of thing, but I didn't know that this was mm-hmm. also a part of this as well. So, the, the one thing I thought was pretty cool from an iOS perspective was you can now preserve your camera settings. Really? So if you ever notice, like if you force quit the app, you can it always reset the camera back to like all the different settings. Now you can actually there's an option to preserve your camera setting, and if you always want a specific filter or always want it to go to video, um to be your default, Mike, that might be helpful for you. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it's a pretty cool setting and a pretty cool tweak that, that everyone can make. Um, I know a lot of people too, that are really into the messaging effects. So I've, I know they added, um, I think a celebration and a heart messaging effect. It is interesting. So, so yeah, when you hit anything, anything with a person, it does come up with just like kind of a, a pop up with all of the uh, skin tone variations and, and sometimes color uh, variations. That's pretty cool. Um, and if you choose a skin tone by tapping and holding on one of these, uh, it, it will change it. It changes from the default color. So I think like I think from there, yeah. So so I'll just be that color from then on. I'm, I'm Missy. I'm sending you no. Oh, for that emoji. So you set the default the default for that emoji after you press in on it. Interesting. To, to your point about the TV app too, I I, mm-hmm. I wish they would have kind of kind of kept the TV app separate because um, it does pull it's it's a replacement to videos. I'm personally excited for the TV app because with things like the CW and HBO and all of those types of services, it will start to pull and pull based on what you have in your library as far as video content Mm -hmm. from an iTunes perspective and what you have access to and watch on in the different apps. Um, I know some people aren't into that, but to me, it's, I I really like that feature on TiVo. um, And I'm hoping they kind of reiterate that same, that same capability. So, but I know, like I said, a lot of people aren't too into it. So I wish they would have kept those apps separate. I guess for simplicity's sake, it makes sense to combine them. But I, th- I think they, we could have gone a version with both. And if they saw the same people going into both apps all the time, they could have combined them. But they should have made a better decision on how they were going to do that. 
Yeah, definitely. And, and even as it is, the, the, the new TV app uh, doesn't seem to integrate with everything yet. Netflix is the biggest thing. Uh, Netflix is apparently playing some kind of holdout game with them. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but our CW and our Hulu does play along with it. And, and you really can't get into the good bits of it yet because um, pretty much it starts over. It starts paying attention to what you're watching after it's been updated, right? So mm-hmm. it know, only knows I watched like 20 minutes of, of the Saturday Night Live with John Cena on it. And that's all it really knows. So as I go and, and get into my habits on my Apple TV, it'll start picking up on that and give me some more accurate kind of uh, um, ideas. I, I like the idea that that, that it is going to be, I go here and just click on shows and I go to the app. But again, you know, it's missing apps that I have access to. Amazon Prime and uh, Netflix, you know, the biggest ones. Uh, I have not gotten to dig in on it, but uh, but I, I'm excited that single sign-on is a thing now. Uh, so you can just pull in the apps that, that apply to whatever subscription you have. Uh, so, um, you know, that, that, that should make things a little bit easier. Also a little easier if you want to, as I've heard people do, like sign up for DirecTV and never uh, uh, hook up the hardware. Uh, mm-hmm. or, or sign up for the, the, the Verizon Fios because it, it makes your internet cheaper and never bother with the box or running the box or anything like that and you just get everything. Uh, you know, that those, those kinds of ideas, like a lot of times live streams, like with the Fox apps and everything too. So uh, that, 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 that's really, I think that's going to kind of help that, help that along as far as the yeah. Apple TV goes. I, I'm wondering what the holdout with, I, I understand the Amazon theory of why they're holding out. I'm surprised that Netflix is holding out only due to the fact that they do this with a couple other services. Mm -hmm. So um, part of me wonders, is Netflix holding out or do they have an exclusive or a partial exclusive agreement with other services? And it's going to be one of those things where we have to wait. I've heard a lot of the back and forth about Amazon and them kind of wanting to create their their mimicked walled garden. Um, and the other thing that it's been interesting to me to see is Amazon starting to go after an a la carte offering that's available to as, as add-ons to per, for prime members. Mm-hmm. So you can now subscribe to HBO through your Amazon account the HBO content will surf, surface inside of Prime as additional free viewable content. Mm-hmm. And the bill back comes through Amazon, not through like HBO Now Direct or through your cable provider or anything like that. So I want, I'm wondering if we're going to see kind of a an Amazon type Direct TV Now or Sling TV where – if you have something that can view the prime membership video, it's just going to be kind of an all encompassing curated video piece. It's their own TV app as opposed to going into somebody else's front end. Yeah. But, but also you're paying for all of those services through Amazon. You're not going mm-hmm. to them individually. Yeah. I and mean, that's, uh, it came up. Um, I'm seeing a lot of previews for star shows that I want to see and that, Oh, Hey, I could get stars through Amazon is becoming more and more of a, a an option when I want to say, okay, I want to go, you know, you know, all the seasons, all my superhero shows are, are out for the summer. Um, let's let's get stars for two months and, and catch up on Ash and the Evil Dead and American Gods and stuff, right? So well, the, the interesting thing too is that it makes it a lot easier to to Amazon's made it really easy to add and subtract. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just as you go, you know, I, I yep. need this for a week or two, and then you're done, right? I'm, so. I'm wondering if Apple or Amazon or somebody as part of this theory is going to make it where you kind of pay if you use it. Mm-hmm. So wouldn't it be interesting if you don't use HBO or say you don't use Hulu for the month, um, you just don't get billed for it. But if you use it, <laughs> they would never go that. That's not that doesn't help them out. That's no but way. It, Google did it with Google Fi. Really? Yeah, I guess yeah, the way we, Google. Yeah, but that's data. That's data, and and I don't know. I just haven't never seen a. It, television is like all or nothing. I watch three channels, but I still have to pay for the 150 I have access to, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that kind of thing. But, you know, you don't pay for what you use. You pay for the option to use more than you ever will. You know, I don't pay for the um, uh, 700,000 hours they're advertising WWE Network. I pay for the, well, I could watch it. 
it, it, in the, the access to it. So, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, anything else about Bub Peaches, Katie? No, that's enough. <laughs> Pe- the peaches came to Mac OS too. Oh, oh boy. So Mac OS, they, they launched iOS, I think it was yesterday, and Mac OS launched this afternoon. So you can get cross platform peaches. Cross platform peaches. Show title. Uh, <laughs> all right, Shilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week in probably a million people are going to disagree with me, but a million others probably do agree with me because the Apple AirPods launched today. Finally, after being Finally. delayed from, I think the, what the original launch was October. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're a little over a week away from Christmas and Apple put up on their store today um, the ability to order AirPods being delivered as early as next week. Mm-hmm. Um, and once within 20 minutes of posting that, um, the ship dates slipped and tumbled into Jan- mid January. Um, I'm sure it's sad for a lot of people. So the devices will be available in stores next week. Um, I'm guessing that there's probably going to be an out of the box firmware update due to some of the, the issues they were claiming they had with getting them to, to sync up and whatnot. Um, and it had to do with both devices. If you had both devices in your ear and only one device lo- ran out of battery, um, or you pulled one out or put one in midstream, the way that it's synchronized, because each each ear pod has its own discrete, discrete connection. So to make sure those are perfectly in sync with what's coming across them, I, from what I hear, that was the issue. I'm super excited for these. I only plan to use one at a time. Um, I do use, Hey, so-and-so a lot. Um, and more and more each day as, as I bring in more home automation, um, to be able to tap on my ear and have my phone upstairs, um, not even necessarily next to me. That's kind of the, the experience I would like. Also, I find myself more and more passing from my phone to my laptop, to my iPad, for it to just automatically connect and not have to worry about that. I'm interested to see how that works. Um, the one thing that I'm not overly excited about, and that it's it's actually, I don't have a problem with the, the ear pods falling out of my ear, as some people say, um, but I do have a problem um, with the background noise and them not being loud enough. Mm -hmm. So I did put a uh, thing in the show notes for the ear hooks. Um, I use this type of device or, or mold on my Bose headphones and I really, really like it. And ear hooks is put, is putting out uh, ear hooks 2.0 for ear pods and the newer AirPods. Um, I'm going to definitely pick up both these things and for 10 bucks to get these molds um, for, for the Apple device. I think it's a great, it's an, it's, it's an easy and quick win, especially for, like I said, anyone who claims they fall out of their ears, I guess I must have small ears, but so they fit just fine. It's more about sealing my ear. So I get all the volume into my ear canal. That's good. Yeah, Cause I mean, that's been, that's been kind of an issue with some people they are worried about that popping out. Um, I mean, they're kind of expensive. How much, how much are air? Ear pods again? I think they're one fifty nine. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a lot to just like when you, lose one of the when pair. When you look at a, a good quality pair of Bluetooth wireless earbuds, I mean you're you're typically talking well over the hundred dollar price range. Like if, I know a lot of runners that use like I think it's the Jaybirds. Um, d- different people using. I mean, I'm not a big Beats person. A lot of people use the wireless Beats. Um, wireless i think a lot of the wireless bose stuff you're you're into the two three four hundred dollar price range so i I don't think the price is out of no 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 i'm just saying a hundred fifty dollar thing is is an expensive thing to lose one of out of your ear while jogging is my problem (laughs) like i i'm not i'm not debating like they're too expensive it just it's an expensive thing to lose 
So I guess if if it fell if you were running if, if you were jogging, you have just as much of a chance of any real earbud unless you have like huge cans like I'm wearing right now attached right. to your head. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I to me it's a pretty weak argument. And you're and if you all of a sudden lose all of the sound coming out of your left ear. There's nothing something just, in your brain that like, says, oh, I need is, to stop and pick that up. Yeah, but it's just like, that's the thing that's going to fall off and into a sewer grate, my luck, you know? Like, that's just, nah. that's that's the scenario I'm seeing. I don't know, maybe it's different when I actually get get somebody's in hand. Or, or, just or as many like people that. lose their phone in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. All right, my awesome thing is something a little old school. So I've been, like, completely addicted to uh watching this uh metal jesus uh show on the youtube um it's they, they do a lot of these buying guys which they just talk about like old consoles and stuff and it's just like the thing i kind of throw on while i'm while i'm working at my desk uh these days and uh i, I came across one that I, a console i've never heard of absolutely never heard of and i think this is a japanese console uh perhaps but the pioneer laser active hey guys remember laser discs <laughs> they basically buddy of mine had, had a panasonic laser disc player and it right. was amazing well this one so the laser active was basically set up that it, it's a laser disc player but then you could buy these um units like they, they look like a car stereo that that sticks into a, a slot on it and you can upgrade it basically to play uh sega genesis and turbo graphics 16 <laughs> <laughs> so splatter house and box yeah exactly it's just like like a, you know stick this in here and 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 even the the sega genesis one um you can play like sega cd in it and everything so it was like ready to go uh, 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 uh and, and and even like i think there were some like the explanation was weird because they're just kind of talking about it but it was like I, i'm pretty sure they could like there were certain laser discs that you would use but it was basically running off of the Sega Genesis hardware. So, and, and also... So did the, wait, so, so did it have a cartridge slot for the game, or did the game come on the LaserDisc? Both, both. Um, you, you, it did have a cartridge slot for Genesis and Turbo Graphics, and I'm pretty sure, like, if you needed a Sega CD or a Turbo Graphics CD, um, it would oh, just... It fit in, the, like, there was an inner tray. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it, it would fit, you know... Right in that that laser disc like like tray thing probably, uh, but uh, but 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 then I think there were laser discs. There were like games ma- made for the laser active that didn't have to do with anything like Genesis or anything. Uh, it, there were very very few. I think they counted like like maybe sixteen or thirty or something like that of these. Um, were they, but, were they of the quality of like Night Trap? <laughs> I, they're of the quality of like laser disc games basically and, and this thing is massive too uh if you're on the video version like they're they're holding this thing up it's heavy it's massive it, it weighed in at about a thousand a thousand dollars uh when it was released in like mid 90s money and i think they equated that they did the math that it's it, it's probably equivalent of about uh if they released it for about sixteen hundred dollars today so that gives you the idea there uh so Again, it, it just amazes me that after all these years, when you think like, "Oh, you've seen every video game console and everything like that," you see something like this pop up, and uh, you're like, "I've never even heard of this thing, right?" Uh, or even 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 at the Replay FX this past year, they had an Apple P- Apple Pico box, which I didn't even think it was a thing that was in the wild. Uh, it was like Apple Bandai or something like that, a Power PC based that was uh, the, console. I think that was cr- like that was announced. This is the anniversary of that device, I think, today. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw, I actually saw a blurb. I can't remember. It might have been on Call of Mac. Um, where, yeah, today today was like the X year anniversary of that device. Wow. Uh, not seeing any news on it right away, but... Uh, but still, it, it 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 it's just uh, really cool to see these kinds of things surface, or things like the the Super Nintendo PlayStation CD prototype that popped up again. That was at Replay FX. 
you know they're like you know the, the, these are these are just the oddest things and the and the goofball things that they're finding for like Game Boy and everything because there's these crazy uh, collectors on these videos. I, I definitely recommend it. Uh, check out the Metal Jesus Rocks YouTube channel, and uh, it, it they got some pretty good pretty good stuff and, and stuff like. They're like, you know, things to look out for when you're training and, and, and everything. It's just cool to just see what kind of stuff is out there. And and the, they have it in the, for the most part. Somebody has one of these things, right? This, the, when they're talking to the Sega CD people, like they had the 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 shelf Sega CD unit, right? That that you put the old school Sega Genesis on top of, and then the side one, you know, and the 32X and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, definitely worth checking out if you're into video games. I, I, I just, I just been on this kind of old school video game run, uh, uh, partially between this and going to visit our replay friends, uh, Friday night and everything. So, uh, so you know, that, that's kind of where I'm at with that. So laser active pioneer laser active, Google it. You'll discover some interesting video game history you didn't know about before. So, all right. Uh, so let's give a shout out real quick to our friends at slice on Broadway. Um, SliceOnBroadway.com, right here on the snowy streets of Beachview, right along the tracks. <laughs> and, uh, of course, down in uh, Main Street in Carnegie, PA, or uh, down at PNC Park home, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they got it, 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 it's, it's, it's uh, the perfect pepperoni pizza supporting Pittsburgh podcasting. Thank you so much, them, for uh, supporting the show for so long. Check out at either location, and we begin the, uh, the inside track from. Uh, our buddy Doug, who should be uh, Doug Durda, should I drink that? Should be joining us on the Christmas episode next week, I believe. Uh, but uh, go go check out their their they have a a, a text uh, specials um, thing uh, that you can do. So go check that out. Sliceonbroadway.com, pgh underscore slice on the Twitter or slice on Broadway on the Facebook. Uh, thanks for supporting the show, guys. Okay, we had some submissions, and uh, first of all, I was really digging this one by our, our friend Matt Weller. Uh, it's actually, uh, as of, as of this, this moment, uh, this is 12, 12 hours left on the Kickstarter, but it's the air block, the modular and programmable, uh, starter drone. Uh, this is what I need is a drone that when it, it, it runs into stuff, it just kind of falls apart. Uh, <laughs> it's modular. It's, uh, I believe held together with magnets and you can kind of, uh, uh take it and, and kind of reconfigure, uh, around other things. And, uh, and, and it's also something to kind of entice kids to, to get into programming, too. It's uh, uh, set up with, uh, I think it's Scratch uh, programming, uh, which you can you know, set up through, through uh, yeah, Scratch-inspired method for, for programming and everything. Uh, so you can program um, you know, different things that the drone's going to do. And, uh, they have, and here's uh, the hovercraft and triangle and spider mode and, and everything uh, configurations. Really cool, really cool concept, and and man, I got. I think twenty seventeen is the year I need to get in the drones, or maybe something like this could mm-hmm. be somewhere along that 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 line. They're uh, uh, doing real good, seven hundred seventy four thousand under hundred thousand dollar gold. So uh, they're they're definitely going to clear that. Uh, so go check out the air block. Uh, if you're getting this in the early Wednesday morning, you might still be able to get in on this. Uh, so. You can get an one air block drone for the eighty nine dollar. There is one left of the three hundred <laughs> for the early birds. So there you go uh, at that level. Uh, so stag them while you can. Get two of them for one hundred seventy nine. Get a get get a swarm of them. So go check that out. Um, and also we got a public service announcement from our other Patreon supporter, uh, Mike Fedor. He sent an article about that says stop using Netgear routers uh, with unpatched security bug experts warn. Uh, this is from a couple days ago here. Uh, but if you're using the Netgear router, uh, definitely check to make sure your model isn't on here. It, it's you know the usual thing that seems to pop up with these routers. It says it's a critical bug that allows remote hackers to inject highly privileged commands uh, whenever they're connected to local Netgear. Uh, so if you have the, jeez, R700, 6400, 8000, 8, um, there, there's a few models on here. So definitely uh, check this out. It'll be in our show notes over at awesomecast.net and see if your model is in there. I don't think I have any neck gears in the collection here. They're usually D-Links and whatever Verizon gives me. So uh, I should be in the clear there for the for the moment. But always keep an eye out for this. Uh, it, it's probably good to, 
Chilla, as a, as a guy that runs works around tech, is it good to like kind of have some sort of Google alert with like the the model that you use just in case something comes up? Not that anybody. Yeah, it- uh, and one of the things that and I'm hoping more and more providers do this, I don't know if Netgear does it, but there needs to be, they, they need to slip in kind of an alert. So if you start browsing, it's almost like the, the router kind of puts a pop up or something to say, Hey, there's an update. Cause it's not just the bugs, but also, I mean, I've seen a lot of people, salvage a lot longer life out of their device Mm -hmm. because there are patches. I've heard of people replacing their routers because they were having issues with, with their Xbox or their PlayStation. And it's as simple as going out and downloading a a, a patch. So it's not just the vulnerabilities, but the, the problem is most of these companies don't have an, a way to, a way to alert the consumer that, hey, there's an update. This is something that Google's doing really well with their new <clears throat> their new devices because you can get alerts on your phone as part of the configuration app. Apple's done really well with this with their airport utility that, that we may we may or may not see go away. But it's it's one thing that I often wonder are these manufacturers not telling people of these updates and expecting them to just shell out more money because they don't know they can update them. Um, some people may read this and say, eh, updating this seems like a lot of work. I'm just going to go buy a new one. Yeah. How many people set and forget it? How, how cheap are routers these days? Like the one I'm look, I brought down here, I realized I paid about 20 bucks for the one that I, I, I just set up in the studio that I don't even know. I think somebody gave to me. I looked it up and it's like 40 bucks, which is, it, again, it's kind of that throwaway tech. Like, well, and I just get a new one. Yet Verizon won't give me a new one that has more than wireless G technology in it. That's weird. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, yeah, I think it is a kind of disposable tech for, thing for, I just need to set something up and have a network, right? Nobody thinks about mm-hmm. that kind of stuff until you get to something like the Eros or something or, or the, or the Google home things that, 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 that will, uh, uh, do more with your, your, your network. Right. But yeah, I, I'm just, it's, uh, I was always impressed. I'm, I'm impressed with the new Google devices. I, I was impressed with the Apple devices of the past, I hope they decide to somehow work that tech into other products. And I, I I do still get the question, you know, what wireless router should I get? And usually it's whatever supports whatever the latest speed is. Like I got a question. There's all these Black Friday deals. Go get something that supports AC and is is upgradable. Um, I, I just think it's sad that people are just throwing away good equipment. And I'm not. Personally, I'm not of the opinion that the signal or the quality of the router degrades over time. Um, I think some people do have that opinion. Um, if you're keeping it up to date and you're you're paying attention to what's going on, like I said, it, it'd be easier if it could alert people. But I, I just feel bad that people are just throwing these devices out left and right. Hmm. Well, uh, well, let's go to the, the, the something that is that we do know is getting updated here. Katie, tell us about the Instagram update. Ooh. Uh, we now have a live of stream, video stream on Instagram. It should be out to everybody here in the next couple of days if you haven't gotten it already. Uh, one major difference between Instagram's live video stream and a lot of other places is it's when it's happening, that's it. When you're done, it's gone. It's not something that you can use again later. Or, um, so you kind of have to either make sure that your followers know that you're going to be Instagramming live, this live video, or you're going to have to make sure it's very compelling. They have a new spot on the, the discover tab where you can look and see what's happening live. So you can see what other people are doing. Well, are you being live? if you guys are curious, if you're watching live, uh, uh, check out Sorgatron on Instagram. I'm live streaming right now. It's only going to be my side of things, but uh, you'll you'll get an idea of how this thing works. Uh, mm-hmm. th- is this going to Facebook? Do we know? Like, if, if I have it connected with my Facebook, somebody's watching out there. No, no, it's, it's we're not we're not to that point yet. It seems like so. This is we're just at the point of just um, just having it instant. Does it does, does it save the video locally, or is it just Mm-mm. destroy? It's destroyed. <laughs> 
it seems like it just goes away. So this is your ephemeral thing. So this is something because I've been I've been uh, I don't know if you guys have seen I've I've been um, doing a lot of streaming while I edit, and I'm definitely like I'm streaming while I'm editing things that were like sometimes selling like the like the wrestling uh, uh, shows, and and I'll stream them and and you know I don't want them to stay up there and it's like then you get to watch the thing right. Um, and I've just been privatizing them. Maybe this is the kind of thing that kind of works for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Or it could, just could be something for me to play with a little bit and just, just for the Instagram side of things. Um, but but it could be interesting. could be interesting. Well, now you have to pay attention to your notifications. Instagram is now forcing you to pay attention to your notifications in case you know somebody you like is live. You don't want to miss it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can create some stuff around it. So, I mean, it, it's everything that I want around... Um, it's everything that I want around, uh, you know, you know the old Paris, you know, Periscope and Meerkat, right? And now, now it's mm-hmm. integrated. I mean, that's what I like is the, the live streaming and everything is kind of works around that. So, I mean, I wonder if we could um, work around with QuickTime like we do with um, what was that? We had uh, oh, po- when I played with the Pokemon Go, um, and I QuickTimed record the video mm-hmm. when I had my phone connected to my laptop. So, I mean, I guess there might be a workaround with that, but there is. But if it, 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 if you're deciding to use this method, mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. would you, you know, why why why, yeah. why would you use something else? Like you, you're using this because specifically you want this to be the way you put things out, right? Uh, well, you, this might. Oh, sorry. You'd have to have a pretty powerful following to get people to drop what they're doing. Mm-hmm. To then go watch, to hurry up and go watch something that may only last minutes. Right, uh, right. I, I, I don't know. I well, could the, see this well, being used more by news and The strategy changes, artists. doesn't it? The, the, the strategy definitely changes this. I mean, this is the kind of thing where if I go to my Wrestling Mayhem show account, um, it, it's it, it's a little bit of weight that I can. Hey, why don't I just turn this on when I have everybody in studio for a Wrestling Mayhem show, and 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 you can check out the show through a different angle there, right? Mm-hmm. Or or this is something you put on the side while we're recording something, you know, which is which is how I use the Meerkat and things like that. Uh, you know, this is the hey, here's the behind the scenes of everything going on. Hawaii. Hey, here's the you know uh, behind the scenes of when we're doing Sawtooth Willie, like we were on Sunday morning, and put that out on Facebook Live. Uh, it's not necessarily something that needs to stay there. Right, and it, 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 and maybe this is something they'll give us a save option later. But in the meantime, uh, it, it seems to be all right. And I, I already have wheels and, and Doug, Dougie, Doug out there, Doug Durda uh, joining us in the uh, in, in the Instagram. Uh, so please let us know what the, how the quality is. Of course, you're just getting my side of the conversation here because the studio is not set up to hear everybody else on the on the remotes. But I don't know. It's pretty cool so far. It's um, there's a little bit on, on the video. So oh, wait, there's my camera. <laughs> I'm still not used to where I'm supposed to look, uh, but that gives you an idea of how it looks so far. And there's a little bit of a chat room uh, kind of function in there and everything. So yeah, you just slide you you, you slide to the to the you know left side like you do um, if you're if you're trying to do a story, uh, which I'm still kind of getting used to that. Um, he's saying the stream's very smooth, probably because I put a new Wi-Fi down here that I'm using that's right there. Uh, but um, th- th- yeah, it looks it looks like it's pretty cool. Uh, so I, this could be this could be a new option if you're really trying to build up that Instagram following. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Now let's see what happens when I end it. What am I and now, now's a good time to use it because they're probably going to try to promote it and bump up those users with well, here's the, the other, people that are using that technology. Here's the other thing too: is like how I, I don't know how is it receiving on the other end. Like, did they get a notification, or is this popping up at the at the top, or you know how how does that work? Uh, so. I'm kind of oh, so it's going to show live at the top. Which have you guys looked at the video um, section of your Facebook lately? Yeah, you can't not. No. I suppose um, I had two viewers. That's good to see. Um, but but really, I think that's interesting. So so one, it, it makes me want to put more videos out. It wants me to do more live uh, uh, videos. Like like I'm looking right now, and there's an awesome cast live feed at the top. Which means anybody that goes on their Facebook in this hour is going to see, oh, hey, the, the the awesome cast is live, and that can hopefully promote more people to go check out our live feed if they happen to be on. And again, you talked about people have to be, um, really dedicated to want to drop everything and do it. I don't think it's like that, Chilla. I think it's a 
this is what I, where I happen to be right now and notice there's something alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess I'm just like there's certain times a day that I go in there to look at certain things. Mm-hmm. And it's not, I guess I'm not, uh, I'm not in there enough that I feel like I would pick up well, when what, someone was live. What was your perception for doing like a meerkat or a periscope? Did you ever get into something like that? Because I think I feel like didn't you also have problems kind of because getting it was into a des- those? Because it was a destination for me, and it was actually available on Apple TV. Mm-hmm. It was something that's uh, it was something I tuned in and watched like TV. Whereas you're already using Instagram, using Facebook, and these things are popping up. You're already in the ecosystem. You don't have to go somewhere new like a meerkat or periscope now. Yeah, I guess I treated it. I treated the service differently. I knew what I was when, when I wanted to watch Periscope and see what people were doing all over the place. Mm-hmm. I went in there and did that. And Instagram, I'm usually, hey, there was a con last week, or there's a con going on that today. I'm going to go in and look for certain hashtags. Or I saw something on Facebook. I wanted to see what the person posted, and I opened up their account on Instagram. I guess it's not something where I go in there to kind of scroll and hang out as much. I have more of a dedicated, like my just random feed reading is more in Twitter and Facebook. I Instagram, usually I get there from Facebook or I'm there for, to search for a specific hashtag. Because I would have, I don't spend enough time in there that I feel like I would see a lot of the live content. Or I would feel like I've constantly missed something because they're going to be like, oh, I was in Instagram right, five right. minutes ago and this person was on. And I'm like, right. oh, they're gone. And again, I think it's just you're not the person they're, they're, they're reaching for. It. Uh, Katie, mm-hmm. what, Katie, is, is, does that seem accurate? Um, it's weird because it, I have, I have, with ScareHouse, there's, my audience is definitely different between Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So I, it's, it just it, for me, it's it's kind of hard to think of like why, I, I don't know, it's hard to, like if I had a moment that I could only capture with one particular social media platform, it, it'd almost be, but then again, it's, I guess people have a lot of moments, like maybe this will be something big for celebrities who mm-hmm. want to, like people who want to get a sneak peek into somebody's life and what they're doing, and it's only up for, you know, how many, however long it's there, and then it's gone. It, cre- but, it creates exclusivity, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Like like maybe, maybe I'd have to play with this. I might play with it tomorrow. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe it makes it. And, and YouTube, you do have, or I'm sorry, Facebook, you do have an option to do something similar where there, there there's videos that are longer but go away. Uh, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe this is something that, that, that pops up if you're trying to hit that audience and, and maybe for Scarehouse, like, hey, check out the line tonight or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, like, here, know. look real quick. Then yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, I don't think. I don't think it's about the type of content as much as reaching that audience. Yeah. When we look at things like this. So I guess I I would think if I wanted to create more reach, I wouldn't create something that you couldn't go back and watch at least, even if it was just for two hours. Mm -hmm. Because the the thing that I have problems with is the they're going to end up having to put the same thing somewhere else. So other people that missed it can see it. If they want to, if they want to, some people Do you really like think it. you're going to be able to get someone to sit and hang out on Instagram 24 hours a day? No, 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 no. But but some people a live on Instagram, you know. B you know are keeping an eye out and checking in to see if maybe you're live. If they, if, they, if they know you're a user that they really want to follow, that that that's live. There's also um, I'm sure this pops into Discovery. Hold on, I'm popping into there's videos you might like and everything. Because wow, this is this is really interesting. So so I'm going into the discovery, and more and more, this is looking very similar to that video page over on on Facebook. So that's all kind of coming together, you know. Uh, so I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's I, I, I and I think they're trying different things in different spots to see how they stick too. This may be a thing that fades away because they're like, well, who's going to mm-hmm. do this? But but. We've already done this, you know. We've already seen; they've already killed off the things that, <laughs> that inspired this kind of thing, and they're kind of coming back. and And rather than it being the platform, it's, it's a feature on a platform, and I think that's really interesting. So, all right. Um, from there, what else is going on, Chilla? 
scroll scroll down to the all the way to the bottom. Um, I, I saw this earlier today and forgot about it, and then I just noticed it and added it into the to the to the um, Ooh, topics. So I- there's this. I'm guessing it's Geroptic, Geroptic. I guess a GIF, GIF, Jerger. <laughs> um, it's it's an actual clip on 360 degree camera for your iPhone or iPad. Um, pretty interesting, and I didn't realize this. There's a there's a rule that iOS things plugging into the port can't leach off the battery, so this does have its own battery built into it. But it brings 360 degree video and photo from both a record and stream perspective to iOS. I think it's an interesting play because Samsung has their device, which I, I, I like a lot. Um, it's, I, I like how this is a little more compact and clips right into the phone versus, you know, you have to put, put something up on a little tripod. I, I'm interested to see how actually companies like Facebook adapt to this. Cause you can, you can stream to Facebook live 360 degree from this. Um, Will this spawn some additional hardware from companies like Facebook um, and maybe even Google that are allowing the the 360 degree feeds? But there's not that many options out there for people to to carry it with them and kind of connect and go. Um, I'll, I'll be interested to see where if if it, even if this company's device doesn't catch on, um, if we'll see a smattering more 360 degree devices in 2017. So I apparently, apparently I had dug into like their other kind of standalone camera option as well. What, so this is a $250, which is a hundred dollars cheaper than say the, the theta 360 or theta S I'm sorry. Um, works only with a lightning port. Uh, is the quality better? Tech specs. I don't see any. I didn't see a spec. 38040 JPEG MPEG 4. 19, okay, 1920 by 960. I will say right off the bat, video is actually worse than the Theta. Um, and the Theta, I would love to get more quality out of it. Right now, it works so, well. But from, from a Theta perspective, so I'm looking at this more as a streaming device. Mm-hmm. How often are you streaming? from the theta right Not like i view the theta is like your low-end recording mechanism well, that yeah, you yeah, kind of that, that is true record I'm, and post ep- edit yeah versus yeah. this is like your live streaming and device. this is this is a consumer e thing which that's not going to be a, a big issue it's not like i'm sitting at wrestlemania trying to stream this thing professionally right um right. and you do go into again no matter how high i record that at chances are the people on the other end are not going to see it full quality, right? Right. Um, something like what we did at Scarehouse, what we've done with the wrestling shows in 360s, uh, with the Pittsburgh Foundation uh, 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 budget rally in 360. Um, yeah, the quality is not super high res, but nobody's going to receive it at super high res either, and it works out uh, very well. It, it I mean, have you gotten... When it comes to this, I feel like more people are interested in they're more interested in the ability to pan around and mm-hmm. check things out than they're concerned with quality. Right. And I think that's where the pictures are. You know, I, I think that's the, the, the pictures are there. The, the, it's there for panoramas. And I think, I think um, that's become very consumerized. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I have, have you guys noticed that if you do a panorama, like the, the, the iPhone panorama, it's treated the same way as if I did a theta three sixty picture mm-hmm. on Facebook, you mean on Facebook? Yes. Here's the thing that bums me out. If you don't go close to 360 degrees, the panorama the panorama is disregarded as 360 degree a 360 degree photo. Because mm. I actually tried it and I only went three quarters of the way around mm-hmm. and didn't realize that I didn't go all the way back to the beginning. Facebook recognized it and didn't let me post it as a 360 degree shot. Oh wow. And it was something. It was it, it was a cityscape, so they could have just kind of auto stitched it and fudged it. 
If they were Google, the back end servers would have taken care of it. I was gonna it. say I just got one of those <laughs> I just got one of those today where I was like, I don't remember taking that panorama and they're like, Oh, we, we stitched these pictures together. I'm like, Oh, thank you, Google. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. So all right. Uh what else do we got here? Uh hey, Pokestops and uh, uh we, we talked about last week about um uh, uh, what, what was it? Starbucks? Where, who was he called? Pokestops. Well, Sprint stores are also going to become Pokestops and gyms. And I just saw a story today that they are releasing new Pokemans on uh, Pokemon. Like the the Generation Two Pokemons are going to start showing up in eggs that you hatch. Yeah, they're they're only hatchable from eggs. And there's a Christmas Pikachu. Oh, okay. I'm in. I'm in. I'm, but, I'm but on. But and that one you can find. It's actually interesting. I know we were talking about the the tracker now kind of working. Mm-hmm. Um, you can actually now use the tracker, and it, when you tap the picture, it kind of zooms and pans around the map <laughs> to show oh, you where that location is. Bless you. Um, bless you. I, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to get. Uh, are the Gen two? Is that permanent or is it temporary? I think it's all kind of build on, build on kind of thing. Okay. I don't, I don't well, think because like the Christmas Pikachu thing. is temporary. Oh yeah, it's seasonal, so you have sure. to find him before December twenty eighth. I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at least if they're doing the Gen two is only being hatchable for eggs, I'm okay with that because I felt like there's no way I'm going to get multiple iterations of ten kilometer sprints in by December 28th to try to hatch a, a bunch of exclusive eggs. But if they're going to keep those around, that's cool. Right. Right. Um, Katie, tell me about my social book. Oh man. So if your social media memories aren't enough in the digital form, you can order a book of your, let me find it, of your social media memories. Like you can actually get, um, it'll go through, I believe, sorry, I'm pulling it back up slowly. Um, you can start your book. You can, you can actually look and see what it looks like without having to commit to buying it. Uh, you log in with your Facebook and it has like your top posts, your top photos. So it's this actual physical book with, uh, your pictures and things printed on it. Wow. Uh, it has comments. It has people's comments in it too. Mm -hmm. All those troll comments dedicated (laughs) to print. That's great. So they're not, it's not terribly expensive. It's like $12 for 25 pages or if you want a hardcover for 15, you can get a, uh, my 2015 Facebook best of book for $10. Mm. <laughs> so if 2015 was your year, you can get it for 10 bucks. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I feel like I kind of want to, so you can just log in and, and kind of see what yours looks like, right? Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. see. Save the moments now. So let's see. Create, let's see my collection. Is that what I want to do? Let's see what, let's see what it just kind of auto generates here on the fly live on the show i'm sure nothing will go wrong here uh, <laughs> this, be so. nothing this but is interesting because we use this kind of thing to actually create we we do a, a physical photo book every year mm-hmm. and the majority of it is going back through and grabbing the photos that we uploaded to, to facebook so so i could definitely see people leveraging this service because it just makes it that much easier mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i want to see what it what it pulls up so so i'm already up to 28 pages and it's only about a, uh, three quarters of the way through the, through the progress bar 32 pages i'm going to have a big book uh, yes, giant pretty, book and it looks like it's just but yeah like if, if you were just dedicating this um to you know some maybe if you like you have chilla you you have a child if you had just primarily the photos you know family photos this would be perfect mm-hmm Absolutely. Just curating those and not having to put real work into it going, Oh, do I like this one? No, look. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I would, it, can, you could do it. The sword could do it with awesome cast. It could be the awesome cast compendium 20, 2015 through 2020. I don't think we put enough oh. stuff on Facebook for that. I'm up to 226 pages for 2016. <laughs> just 2016. Um, presumably. I, I, I think that's where we started processing. Wait a few seconds. Yeah, they have not. I think they've underestimated the uh, the the power of my Facebook page. I went uh, from 2014 to 2016, and I'm up to 87 pages. Mm. <laughs> you can do. You can actually do. It, you can actually have it do a book of friends, so you can pick up to five Facebook friends. Mm-hmm. You can do your. You can do family. Uh, this is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
still waiting. Still waiting. I do like having physical pictures and physical, because I mean, eventually this is all. So not that face, you know, this social media ever really goes away, but eventually it all might. I mean, Facebook could totally go away. We wouldn't have any of these things we wrote and comments we may have liked. It seems like the perfect thing for for parents too. Like, like mm-hmm. I, I think my mom was the, the big like family photographer. You know, had all the books, the the the, the picture books and everything. You know, I, like this is a thing that could go right on the shelf, right next to something like that. If you're like, well, I've converted the digital. This is where we're at with it. You know, mm-hmm. my progress bar is going insane. Oh, 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 let's see. Well, my book would be $70. Oh, jeez. Do I get to look at it? Oh, now it's going through uh, 2015. Do I get the, yeah. You'd be surprised, like, if you go to, like, a Snapfish or, like, one of those services, mm-hmm. you'd be surprised how quickly you could get one of their books up to 70 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, real uh, okay. quick. <laughs> well, you're doing one-off printing. It makes sense. I do love the, this... the... go ahead. Okay, go ahead, no. I was going to say, I, I just thought it was interesting. So the, the front of the book is uh, the picture from the gathering and me with the, the barbed wire bat that I've had. It's, it's just completely my Facebook page for, <laughs> for, for pictures. What are you saying, Katie? And this, this is one of those points where your most like posts may not be the one you want to remember. For example, on page four, the first thing it says for January through March 2014 was my post about having to go home and put my cat to sleep. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> why? yeah that's like that's like the first thing that comes up and just like all the comments underneath <laughs> about losing my cat the first the first post apparently this is the most liked po- that, post i'm presuming and there's no context to it actually no i guess there, i guess the pictures are on the left this is my wife's coffee and this is important my wife never drank or even tolerated the the the, the, the slight hint or taste of coffee <laughs> and i go on from there <laughs> that's that's the thing that's the thing that pops up wow this is really interesting actually this is kind of cool and of course it's mostly instagram pictures because i cross post everything um, um do you see a lot of qr codes in yours i do see like there's one right by you actually right here yeah. like you as savannah nevada uh i'm sorry no penny avocado whatever you were that day uh there's wow that's interesting so is there any context for the the qr codes I don't know. I'm guessing it takes you to that person's page or something. Oh, yeah. I bet it does. I bet it takes you to that picture. Like, that's the web address. And mine is blank. Mine started going blank. Oh, oh, I see. That was the end of the month. Wow. So it's month by month. Wow, that's pretty cool, actually. I, like now, pretty- I, now I kind of want this. So, um, well, if you, you want to check you out, you can remove specific posts too. So, if, like, if you like don't want the thing to start out with your cat, <laughs> yeah, stuff like I don't want, I don't want this one in here. That's like, yeah, here's just a, a, a one of the postings for Awesome Cast. You know, with the, with the image and the description and everything. You know, that doesn't. Oh, here's like maybe I don't want to include all these pictures from the Port Authority meeting where it almost turned into a riot <laughs> from, from the beginning of the year. Like that's that's you may something. have a good memory from that night. Oh well, I did get to meet the barber at the top of the hill that happened to be a pro wrestler named the Latin Assassin. So that was a good memory from that. Not represented in the pictures, unfortunately. So, uh, so mysocialbook dot com if you want to check it out. Oh, I like this page here of the most uh, the most liked pictures. Um, so that's pretty cool. Go check it out. I like it. Maybe a nice Christmas gift. Uh, ships in six days if you want to get at that. Um, Real quick here, uh, so and I, and I imagine you have to break into your uh, your mother's uh, Facebook, uh, hack your mother's Facebook account to <laughs> log in and do it if you want to give that as a gift or something. Uh, so there you go, awesome. Two hundred sixty pages, seventy dollars for twenty sixteen alone, <laughs> and it was already processing up to twenty fourteen. So I'm kind of curious to see what those look like. Guys, it's been fun. This is the last regular awesome cast of the year. Oh. Yeah. So next week we are going to have uh, hopefully a myriad of special guests and uh, and and talk about our predictions and how we did on our predictions for this year and everything. So looking forward to that. Oh, hey, coming up there's some events. First of all, next Wednesday at Carnegie um, Library here in Beachview there will be a boot camp. That's the 21st, I believe. Uh, there will be a. Oh, I, I'll be in recovery because it'll be the day after the Christmas episodes. Uh, but uh, uh, it, they're going to be doing an intro to social media, if you're interested in that. That's going to be at 6 p.m., Carnegie Library of Beachview, Wednesday the 21st. 
Uh, also, I just saw in the emails today, Refresh Pittsburgh's December meetup is going to be the 20th. So if you don't want to witness here in person our uh, our Christmas specials, uh, go check that out. Refresh Pittsburgh. Dot... Nope, that's just an event break. Just look up Refresh Pittsburgh. Uh, their meetup is going to be about... Hold on, hold on. That topic escapes me. I want to make sure I get it right if you're interested in that. It'll be a really cool topic, I'm sure. It's cre- it's, it's about creating yes. conversational apps, how to design, develop, manage voice-based applications. That, Ooh. that. thank you. You got to it first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're usually really good, especially if you're in the designed kind of uh, uh, side of things. Uh, usually, th- usually they're more designer-focused. This is for them doing app apps and, and, and things like that. Um, that's, that's kind of a, a new side for them, I think. So, but cool. See this, good to see them evolving. So go check them out. Refresh Pittsburgh. Uh, and I think that's all the stuff going on for this month. I'm trying not to book too much this month. Uh, cause you know, there's some kind of holiday happening. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> go check out everything. Uh, podcamppittsburgh.com. We had the, uh, evening with podcamp with the Etsy um, uh, over it's, it's still over the live streams over on our uh, podcast Pittsburgh Facebook page. Uh, as soon as I get a moment, I will have that edited and we'll have that finalized one up on our YouTube and Facebook as well and on podcastpittsburgh.com. So stay, keep an eye out for that too. So, all right, Chilla at Chilla on the Twitter, chillatech.net, John Chilla on the Facebook. He's your gadget man. Hit chill, him up. Chill a photo on the on the Deviant Arts. Hit him, the gadget man. Hit him up. Hit him up if you're gadgeting your photography questions, right? Yeah, questions, comments, is something you're interested in, definitely reach out. Yes. And Katie is at K Dutters on the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and her Grimlock. My little Grimlock buddy. Her holiday Grimlock. Mm-hmm. Uh what's going anything going on? Anything going on? You're in your off season right now. Yeah, yeah, going over customer comments and getting ready for next year already. There you go, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all full speed ahead, all the time. So, uh, hit her up with social media questions on the on the on the so, on the Twitters as well. Uh, Sorgatronmedia dot com is where I hang my uh, digital hat most of the time. Psychicmediaservices dot com if you need some help and uh, so much other stuff going on. And uh, if you follow me, if you follow me on the uh, Facebook, like I said, I'm, or, or follow Sorgatron on the Instagram, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. I've been live streaming a lot today because I've been in the office editing all day long at turn the camera on to see if anybody wants to watch me edit. Um, Cause that's what we do. So uh, check out everything. Awesomecast.net subscribe, patreon.com slash awesome cast. See you in the awesome cast Facebook group. A lot of great discussions and stories going on over there. Please, uh, please continue. Thank you, everybody that, that sent us a story this week to, to discuss. Um, and uh, please continue that. And uh, we'll see you guys for the Christmas special next week. Uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.